Yo, Yo dudes. dudes! So welcome! Welcome to Bombay tomato, tomato and aubergine curry. Tomato. Tomato, tomato, <laughs> tomato, tomato potato. Bombay potato and tomato curry. Uh, so aubergines, many people like or dislike. Uh, this is kind of a take of a brinjal masala, which is an incredibly tasty aubergine curry. We're going to show you how to cook aubergines properly, pair them with fennel seeds, and give you a sweet, delicious, well-seasoned tomato sauce to, to bring some magic. Oh, you kind of had it going, and then you lost it. Yeah. Uh, but it'll take, it'll take about 25 minutes, super tasty. It'll feed, it'll feed probably three really hungry people or five like normal people. And in this, we're going to teach you a basic frame which to go forth, and you can interchange fruit or vegetables and make an incredible dishes. Here we go. Okay, so pan on a high heat. I'm going to go with probably a tablespoon of oil. Yeah. So it's lovely and hot. We've so we've diced our vegetables, so we or our base veg. So we've got. Two red onions, which we've diced reasonably finely. We've got two cloves of garlic. We've got a nice, generous, about half a thumb-sized piece of ginger. We and left the skin on with the ginger because it's organic and a lot of the minerals are in the actual skin. So if you're using organic veg, always leave the skin on in terms of ginger. We've got one red chilli. And as we always say with chilli, if you don't like it spicy, take the seeds out of it, take out the white membrane and use half what we used. We used a full red chilli there. We left the seeds in and the white membrane because we love the taste of it. So with the aubergine, one of the key things is to chop it small. Because aubergine on its own can be a bit bland, but it's a wonderful carrier flavor and a wonderful texture. The smaller you chop it, the more ability it has to absorb more flavor. We've got approximately 600 grams of potatoes. We left the skin on because a lot of the minerals and vitamins and the fiber is in the skin. Uh, we give them a good wash, good rinse, and we're gonna chop them up nice and finely. Okay, so our onions have started to brown, indicating that there's caramelization that's been flavor development. Time to add in our full aubergine. We're gonna add that in first. Many people at aubergines think you still have to salt them, and that was kind of something back in the 80s when aubergines were very bitter, but they've been kind of bred, that bitterness has been taken out of them. So you do not need to salt them and rinse them first. Okay, so with our aubergines, we're gonna add our prepped spuds. We've got approximately 400 grams of potatoes, uh, spuds or potatoes. We've left the skin on. We're going to go with a nice generous pinch of salt and what's that going to do is that's going to draw the moisture out of the potatoes and allow it to steam in its own juices. So now I always add the spices in when we're adding our vegetables. So I've got a teaspoon of fennel seeds. Not essential but fennel seeds will really kind of give that nice aromatic flavour. A lovely aniseed flavour that pairs really well with aubergines. And when you've you got, put it in a sweet tomato sauce it's kind of typical of a brinjal masala. We've got a teaspoon of ground coriander. Going with half a teaspoon of ground cardamom. Obviously, with all these spices, if you have them at home, that's great. If you don't, you could just go with two tablespoons of curry powder, and it would work the same, similar enough, just slightly different seasoning. Half a teaspoon of ground turmeric. Turmeric gives it that distinctive yellow color. Super high in antioxidants and... Uh, Anti-inflammatory. Yeah, and then uh, finally, I'm gonna go with a teaspoon of ground cumin. So I'm going to spread that around and give it, about, <laughs> give it about 30 seconds to a minute, allowing the spices to cook up and kind of awaken their flavours. Because they've been sitting in their jars dormant and the heat will help draw out more flavour in them. Now what we do here is we reduce the heat to medium. I've got it down to medium heat. I'm going to pop a lid on and leave it sweat away in its own juices for probably about 10 minutes. And this works almost like an oven. The vegetables, it'll create a natural oven which will cook the vegetables in their own sauce. And it'll enhance the flavour, it's great. Just make sure and stir it every kind of couple of minutes or so. Uh, so we've left that to stew for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's come together beautifully. And we did stir regularly. The thing that you're looking for to know that it's kind of getting near cooked is to taste one of the potatoes. They should start to feel soft. I'm not quite cooked, but almost cooked. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time to add our sauce. We've got 400 ml of just a regular veg stock. I just made it up as you typically do. We'll add that to the pan. And I've got one can of chopped tomatoes. That's 400 grams or 400 ml. So brinjal masala typically has kind of a sweeter tomato sauce. So I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of maple syrup. One, it's gonna offset the acidity um, from the tomatoes and two, it's just gonna add a sweetness which will go so well with the fennel seeds. In terms of further flavor agents and spices, I'm gonna go in with half a teaspoon of black pepper. I like it, gives kind of back of the throat nice taste to it. And I'm gonna go with a teaspoon of salt. So here you'll note we're cooking with the lid off and what we're trying to do is evaporate a lot of the moisture to concentrate and to reduce the sauce so the flavors become more stronger, more pronounced, and the sauce thickens when the starch of the potato releases. 
So we've allowed that to reduce and the sauce to evaporate and become thicker and more concentrate for about 10, 15 minutes. The aubergine is broken down, it's delicious, it's soft, it's succulent. The whole dish tastes super aromatic and flavorsome. And what you're looking for is that the potato is cooked, it is soft and that the aubergine is not chewy or rubbery, it should melt in your mouth. Once you've hit that degree of um, texture, it's ready to go. So most important thing with a dish is seasoning. So take your spoon, in you go. You wanna take, most important thing in terms of seasoning dishes, your tongue. You're trying to achieve a harmony between the five flavor agents. So salt, sweet, acid, bitter, and umami. So in terms of umami, the tomato is bringing that um slight umami note in it. Mm. Um, sweetness was coming from the maple syrup. Uh, saltiness, Dave is adding a little bit more now. I'm gonna go with another teaspoon of salt. I, I just think it could do it. It'll help enhance the flavors. What they say is salt will um, enhance the flavor of your dish more so than any other uh, fancy, cooking, fancy technique. cooking technique you can have. So uh, in terms of acid, this will go, it, this will extend the flavor profile. So currently it's all right here. It's between, you know, um, sweet. There is a slight umami note. There is a slight degree of saltiness and the acid is just bringing a whole other dimension to the party. So we're going with juice of half a lime. I'm gonna go with, and finally, we love coriander. We're gonna go with a little bit of coriander for color to kind of give that distinctive Indian note. I think it's the most used herb in India. Uh, just chop it finely. And last and final things in, in terms of uh, garnish, we're gonna go with some flaked almonds. Toast them to add more flavor or just pop them on as is. Beautiful. Uh, so we're just gonna taste it and just make sure it's balanced, it tastes epic. There's a lovely sweetness, there's a lovely savory note, there's a nice salty element to it. It's beautifully balanced. And it's kind of hung in a wonderful aromatic um, blanket. It's really, yeah, really delicious. Beautiful. Uh, so there you have it, Bombay tomato and potato curry. It took us, I'd say, 20 minutes from start to finish. It's super flavoursome. It'd make a great lunch the next day because the potatoes will thicken up and it'll end up kind of a lovely, like, thick stew. It'll last for three days in the fridge. It freezes really well. Uh, please share this with anyone that would need some kind of recipe inspiration. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ciao!